take the hardest, longer way to do these questions, then you're not going to finish them. Okay? So that's the difficulty, that there's more than one way to do the question. Okay? So when I do these, I'm going to follow kind of a set of rules. Okay? First of all, to divide radicals, the roots must be the same. And I'm not giving you any that they're not. That's something you'll pick up in your next algebra-based class. So you don't have to worry about that, but they do have to be the same. Just I should let you know that for sure. Then, when I'm doing this simplifying, I go through a series of questions. Okay? First of all, I ask myself, does everything have perfect squares? Because if everything has perfect squares, it's very simple then. You just take the perfect squares and you're done. If it doesn't have perfect squares, could I reduce the fraction? Okay, now when I say reduce, I mean like something like 2 over 4 equals 1 over 2. That's reducing, okay? So know your terminology. Can I reduce the fraction and then get perfect squares? Okay, so that's a possibility. I would try that next. Then I would say, can I reduce the fraction and break it up? So this would be like if I took, my brain's not working, so I've got to think for a second. If I took 24 over 2 and got 12, and then I could take the square root of 12 and make it 4 times 3. Okay, so can I reduce the fraction and then break it up? Okay. So when I say break it up, what I mean by that is when you have the square root of something like 12 and you make it 4 times 3. Okay. Once you go through all these options, when you get it as simple as you know how up to today, and you still have a radical left in the denominator, you have to go through a process called rationalizing the denominator. And that means that you have to get rid of the radical that's in a denominator of a fraction, okay? So simplest form would mean that you cannot have a radical in a denominator, so you have to get rid of it. So we're going to go through learning how to rationalize a denominator, how to get rid of the radical. And that's where we come back to that conjugate thing, okay? Okay, so I'm going to go through these kind of with that series of questions. So I'm going to take you the way that... I would do the question, obviously. Um, it's probably the quickest way, maybe, on, some que on most questions, okay? Square root 25 over 16. Do these both have perfect squares? They do. The square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 16 is 4. So you're thinking, she thinks this is the hardest section? Just wait. Square root 75 over 3. Do these have perfect squares? They do not. Can I reduce this fraction? Yes, I can. 75 divided by 3 gives me 25. When you reduce something, when you reduce something, the radical is still there. I'm going to repeat that. When you reduce something, the radical is still there. A common mistake is taking it away and you think you're done. If you do that, then you'll be in trouble in the end, okay? Then I can square root that. The square root of 25 is 5 for my final answer. The square root of 8 over 81. Do these have perfect squares? One of them does. One of them does not. Could I reduce this? No. So let's do two different things in this question. One, in my numerator, I'm going to break it up. And in my denominator, I'm going to take the perfect square. So 8 goes to 4 times 2. So I have the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 2, I don't know. And in my denominator, the square root of 81 is 9. That's as far as I can go. Square root of 2 can't simplify any further. I've gotten rid of my radical in my denominator, so I'm good to go. In my next question, square root two fifths. Perfect squares? No. Can I reduce this fraction? No. Can I break up this fraction? No. There's nothing I know up to this point to do with that. However, I have a radical left in my denominator, so I have to get rid of that square root five. Um, I should also point out at this point that when you have something like this, square root two fifths, that this is equivalent to square root 2 over square root 5. 
When you write a fraction, you can write it as a single fraction with one radical or a fraction with two radicals, and they mean the same thing. Okay, so sometimes people don't like the way this looks, but they like the way this looks. So if you had to switch that to make it look like this, you can. You don't have to. Okay, I'm not going to. Um, but do know that those are equivalent things. Okay? So here we go to our process of rationalizing the denominator. Um, I pointed out last class an important concept that when you take a radical times itself, it gets rid of the radical. Square root 7 times square root 7 gives me square root 49, which is 7. Square root 13 times square root 13 is square root 169, which is 13. Square root 25 times square root 25 is square root 625, which is 25. So a radical times itself gets rid of the radical because you're doing inverse operations. You're squaring a square root. It's undoing. It's like adding and then subtracting the same thing. Okay? So I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to rationalize it by multiplying by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. I'm choosing that number because that's the radical I'm trying to get rid of in the denominator. I'm trying to get rid of this square root of 5, so that's why I chose 5. And I have to write it as square root of 5 over itself because that's equivalent to 1. And you can't just take something and multiply it by anything you want without changing it. So you have to make sure you're multiplying by something that equals 1. And when I write square root 5 over square root 5, that's 1. So I'm not changing the value of this in any way. Okay. So in my numerator, the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 10. And the square root of 5 times itself is just 5. If you want to make this 25 first, that's fine. But then make sure you square root it. Okay? Don't go and reduce then and get back what you started with. <clears throat> this fraction will not reduce because the 10's in a radical and the 5's out of the radical. So that's the simplest one. You're done. Four over square root three. No perfect squares. Don't be thinking four is a perfect square because four is not even in a radical here. Okay? Can't reduce it. Can't break it up. So we're going to have to rationalize it. So I need to get rid of a square root three, which means I'm going to multiply by square root three over square root three. In my numerator. 4 times square root 3 is 4 square root 3, not 12. Square root 3 times itself is square root 9, or just 3. Jump in with any questions as we're going here, okay? Next question. Do these have perfect squares? One of them does. Can I break anything up? The x does not. Can I reduce it? No. So I have to do a combination of things. Um, I'm going to make it kind of a two-step question. So I like to get it as simple as I can before I rationalize it. Because sometimes if you do that, you don't have to rationalize. But on this particular one, I still have a, a denominator with a radical. So I'm going to multiply by square root x over square root x. And I get in my numerator 2 square root x. In my denominator, I get square root x squared, which is just x. And again, I don't typically write that x squared, but I'm just going to show you that that's what it is. Okay, so here we get into some ones that this is where 
there's multiple ways to really do them. Ones I've done so far, just one way to approach it. Now you get into ones where you really got to go through the process of kind of going through those questions, or you can make it more difficult for yourself, okay? So, 56 over 40. Perfect squares, no. Can I reduce this? Yes. On your calculator, you can reduce a fraction, so you make sure you do it correctly, because I think I've gotten a bigger one on here somewhere. Maybe not. You can reduce the fraction, and it will give you the reduced form of a fraction. So if you can't reduce 56 over 40 on your own, go to your calculator and go 56 divided by 40. You'll get a decimal. And then go up to your fraction function. Because you want to leave it a fraction, not a decimal. Go up to your F1, and then the number four option is to convert it to a fraction and you get 7 over 5. So all I've done was reduce it first. If you go right away and go square root 40 over square root 40, you're going to have a disaster. Okay? So reduce it. Now, I've reduced it, and I end up with numbers 7 and 5. No perfect squares. Can't reduce it any further. Can't break those up. So now I'll rationalize it. I'll get rid of that square root 5 by multiplying by square root 5 over square root 5. 7 times 5, both under the square root, gives me square root 35. Square root 5 times itself gives me 5. In my next question, I have 5 times square root 24 sixteenths. That 5 would be considered part of the numerator. That's like a 5 over 1 on the outside. Okay, so please know that that's what that means. And again, if you like it better as two separate radicals, you could rewrite this as 5 square root 24 over square root 16. Okay? So, in this particular question, I have a number, 16, that's a perfect square. And I have 24. That's not a perfect square. So I have a couple of options here. So this is where it gets a little tricky, starts getting a little tricky. Um, I could reduce it first to 3 over 2. I could square root and break it up first. Okay. Um, and honestly, knowing the best way to do these just comes with experience. So you're not going to have that yet. Okay. So just know that there are a couple options. On this particular problem, I would not reduce this fraction first because then I will have to rationalize. But because the denominator is a perfect square, I won't have to. So that's what I'm going to do first. If you reduce it to 3 over 2, it's not a big deal to rationalize that. That's a very fast one. Okay. So this is where it starts gets, getting a little tricky and experience plays a role. Okay. So, I'm going to take the uh, numerator, and I'm going to break it to 4 times 6. So, I'm going to have my 5 that's there. I'm going to have my square root of 4 is 2. And I'm going to have my square root of 6 left. In the denominator, perfect square, square root of 16 is 4. Again, this is one of the ways you can do it. Multiply your 5 times 2. and then reduce this. The numbers on the outside can reduce with each other. 5, 2. So I get 5 square root 6 over 2. 